So, people are always asking me. They come up, they say, Hey, Alice, what kind of telescope should I buy? And you're not going to like my answer. My answer is, don't go buy a telescope. If you're buying your first telescope, you're not ready for a telescope. You should buy binoculars. They're great. Put them on a tripod, and you'll be able to look at all of the same things, and you'll be able to learn what you're interested in in the night sky. Um, but you don't want that answer, and you're not going to listen to me. Or if you are going to listen to me, great. But uh, generally, people really want to know, what telescope should I buy for a beginner? For my son, for my daughter, it's my first time buying a telescope. I've been watching this guy for 30 years. And I understand. I bought a first telescope, definitely. So the thing you need to understand is a telescope is all about gathering light. You need to gather as much light as possible because you are looking at a dark sky. All right? So what we need to look at in a telescope is what telescope has the most light gathering power. So let me show you a couple basics about telescopes first and then I'll give you some recommendations. This right here is a Galileo scope. It was built for the International Year of Astronomy. It is a kit telescope and depending upon whether or not they are still making them when you view this, um, you can buy it from galileoscope.org and they cost about twenty dollars. It's a kit telescope so that means you can take it apart and put it together as many times as you want. So I'm going to take this one apart so that I can show you the important parts of a telescope. Okay. The Galileo scope is a refractor telescope. It refracts light. It does that by using a lens. In this case, it's got this lens here. It's called an objective lens. Um, that basically just means it's the big lens and it's the really important part of the telescope. This objective lens was designed by a whole team of experts and although this telescope kit is only twenty dollars they spent when they spent money they spent money on this lens this lens is made of glass It is an extremely high quality lens and that's something that's important when you buy a telescope you want good optics it doesn't matter what the rest of the telescope is made out of it matters what the lenses are made out of especially the objective lens or the primary mirror so this one is made of glass it's a very nice lens you just stick it in there and then you can put the whole telescope back together put these pieces here in this kit telescope you are also building your own eyepieces so the eyepiece comes apart there's four lenses in the regular eyepiece two in the Galilean eyepiece and it fits right in here in the end like that very simple telescope very simple to use going to want a tripod for it as well. Uh, the thing they did really well with this telescope is even though it's a pretty, looks like a pretty cheap telescope, it's not the kind I would ever recommend that you get. If you're going to buy a telescope that looks like this, you either should buy this one or save your money and buy something completely different, okay? Because I never recommend telescopes that look like this. But this one, they did a good job and they made it so that you can fit any standard professional eyepiece to it and you can turn it into a much better little uh, machine. So the Galileo scope is great. So I mentioned the objective lens in that one but I also want to tell you about reflecting telescopes. This is an astro scan and as you might guess from a reflecting telescope there is a mirror which reflects light instead of a lens which bends light, refracts light. The AstroScan is pretty good. I love it. It's my favorite beginner telescope. The interesting thing about it is if you notice how big this mirror is and you compare it to how big this objective lens is, think about which one you think might be able to gather more light. Imagine they were both buckets of water. Which one would be holding more water? A bucket this big around or a bucket as big around as this. Now you might say it matters how deep the bucket is, but if they're the same deepness, your wider bucket is going to gather a lot more light. So you want to buy the fattest telescope you can possibly afford. Now beyond that, you want a fat telescope and you want a telescope uh, that has good optics. Beyond that, it doesn't really matter because you can, uh, you can improve upon them. So here's another one. This one is very similar to the AstroScan. 
It has a slightly different style of mount. You notice it spins this way and it spins this way, whereas the Astro Scan is on the ball. Different style of mount, made by somebody else. It's a little different, but also has that primary mirror down there in the bottom. And that's about the same size as the primary mirror inside the Astro Scan. So I would call these two telescopes pretty comparable. Uh, they do come with that standard eyepiece size mount, so you can use any kind of professional eyepiece in them. And you want to choose a mount that you feel comfortable pointing. Uh, if this doesn't make sense, you can't figure out how to point this one, this one might work a little better for you, same as vice versa. Uh, if you have a whole bunch of dials where you need to change it so, to point the telescope, that's going to be a lot harder to learn. I want to show you one last telescope before I depart. This is a telescope that's very special in the hearts of those of us who work here at the Pacific Science Center. So I talked to you a little bit about different types of telescopes, basic types of telescopes, and about some of my favorites. Now I want to share one with you that we are very proud of here at the Pacific Science Center. It was made by two volunteers, Lee Buse and Sonny Tremulet, and it's pretty exciting. It's named Columbia in honor of the Space Shuttle mission. And it's a much larger telescope than anything that you have seen before. All right, so if you take a look, this one is a reflector telescope, because it has a mirror. And this mirror is 16 inches in diameter. So this is a much bigger light bucket than any of the other telescopes that I was showing you. And so it has a lot more light gathering power, makes it a really great telescope to use. A lot of fun. You can see some neat things. This is only the bottom half of it. The top half, the top half is here, and we put struts that hold it up about seven feet up above that, and then you look through an eyepiece in the side here, so you have to stand on a ladder. This is our Columbia, and we love it a lot. Well, I hope that was helpful to you. Thanks. Keep looking up. See you later.